We are in the face of an epidemic. We have a public health crisis here. In the last five years, opioid overdose deaths have outnumbered motor vehicle deaths. That's a huge number of people who are being affected across our country, across our state, in every level of wealth, every type of community, men, women, children, the elderly. It's pervasive. It's everywhere in our, in our society right now, and it's a problem. There's a population that for the last 10 to 20 years that has, was brought up basically in the we're going to treat a pain aggressively with opiates in that sort of mentality. And so we're realizing how significant the side effects are. Everybody, when they take an opioid, will become physiologically dependent. In other words, your body's reaction to it is the same no matter who you are. It's not a judgment on the patient if they become dependent on the medication. The question is, is when does a pendant, dependency and addiction, where do those overlap? The concern we have with opioids is that dependency and addiction are very difficult to parse out. Hit some ice and just, uh, I think I hit another car. And so yeah, I um, was shaken up and I, that's when I, uh, yeah, started taking pills for the pain and um, after that it just kind of snowballed and uh, I guess being in pharmacy and having access to that uh, was when things really started to go downhill. I went to the um, emergency room and instantly they just prescribed me pain, pain medication and, um, and I soon found that I like them. And, um, and I knew they were easy to get at that time. And so all I had to do was say I was in pain and then I would get unlimited prescriptions. And, um, and that went on for a couple years. It just took over my life. Like it was like this dark cloud just evolved over me. And, and I couldn't see past it. And, um, and I was in the midst of this, just this um, tornado of darkness and, and I couldn't get out. When you're um, taking those substances, there, you know, it changes the way you think, and um, you don't think about the risks. It doesn't. You put that out of your mind, and uh, you know, it's always you know, just one more, and then after that, I'll stop. And it's the same as you know, like breathing or needing water. It's your mind thinks that you know, if you don't keep taking these things. Um, you'll die, like you need them to survive. And uh, nothing else matters at that point. Some of the first things to go were my values and um, my values and my morals. And I started doing everything I said I would not do. I started stealing, I started lying, um, I started doing crime. Shortly after that, I lost my house. I lost my, um, my job. I lost um, all my friends, I lost my family. You know, I knew that there consequences that you know my career would be in jeopardy um, but I didn't think about it then and um, that's just how pervasive the, uh, the addiction is it's not a choice you know it's a disease and taking away that stigma um, that you know I know I felt and prevented me from getting help at times reaching out just a tiny bit can um, really start, you know, you can get people to help you. And there are so many people willing to reach out to you and help you. Um, and it's just like that first step. It's not easy and the hardest thing you'll ever do is admit you have a problem and ask for help. And there, there is help out there and there is, there are people that have gone through what, what they're going through and that can help them out. Nobody can do the footwork except for them but there are people that will walk with them.